You're listening to the Echo Ratings Eventing Podcast, the show with a light-hearted look at the eventing world, all of the big event previews, reviews, and special guests, and of course, backed up with all of the key Echo Rating stats. Welcome to the Echo Ratings Eventing Podcast. Welcome to the Echo Ratings Eventing Podcast. And oh my goodness, I'm so excited because it has been a long time, listeners, since we have been able to bring you a preview show. And that is exactly what we have got in store for you today. We're going to catch up on some news that has been happening over the last few weeks as well as eventing has been kickstarted back into action. Um, but first, let me introduce you to my two guests. It has been a while since I've been on a show with Spike the Fat. Spike, how are you? I'm very good, Nickers. Very good. Thank you very much. How are you? Yeah, good. Good. Um, had a lot of fun with Arkin, an eventing manager, and all of that. Uh, had some really cool shows, but I am so excited to have real life eventing. Oh my God, I got a little bit addicted oh. to eventing manager. I was officially terrible at it. <laughs> Changed my team a million times. And I think I'll just go back to football manager because I'm a geek. It was so funny. Listener Spike was messaging us going, oh, should I change my team? Should I change? Uh, this is my this is my theory behind it. You had really good uh, uh, technique, I guess, in that what you tell tell the listeners what you were thinking of like mid price range. Were you mid price range or were you given a half no, a drop score? No, I was going for pick like the cheapest person as the fourth one because you're going to have a drop okay. score anyway and then find your best three because I, you know, if you want to win it, you're going to try and win it. And then I didn't win it. <laughs> Where did you finish? I was quite impressed, actually. I think I finished. So I picked my team on the 30th of June and stuck with it before I had any inclination of results or anything and obviously avoided any temptation to change it. Um, and I think I finished inside the top 1,000, which is unheard of for me. Um, so I'll take that as a, you know, I was 458th, which I thought was... You- like, Nailed it. I was oh. at 1500 or something, which was quite good given my previous record. So the, the dizzy heights. Yeah. Um, but anyway, um, let's catch up in a second about what you've been up to. Because I know you've been to a couple of events already. Unbelievably jealous. Uh, but next, we will welcome our second guest, Catherine Austin, who also aced eventing manager. And horse and hound, Catherine, were triumphant after the slight <laughs> disappointment of Chatsworth. So exciting. Uh, yes, I actually was looking forward to pointing out that for once, I really did quite well in eventing manager. After a couple of very disappointing starts, I finished 79th in like the Ooh. whole world, which I think is quite good. And most importantly, Horse and Hounds absolutely whooped Eventing Nation and the Chronicle <laughs> of the Horse and yes. Echo Rating. <laughs> yeah, it did. Horse and Hounds so, was very impressive. Who did you have yeah. in your team? Well, quite old school, actually, which um, was quite a successful way of doing it. I had Zara and Toy Town. Yeah, the I eventual had winners. Andrew Nicholson and Nareo. I had William Fox Pitt and Nerf Decor and Frank Ostholt. Okay, so those three were your, the three Brits, oh, well, the two Brits and the Kiwi were your, um, in all inside the top 10. So, yeah. Yes. And okay, I, I was very impressed to be honest. I saw because um, Eventing Nation will have to do some sort of forfeit. We're waiting for news <laughs> on that. We'll keep you posted, listeners, but there will be something coming. If you missed any of Eventing Manager, you can go on to the Echo Ratings Facebook page and watch it back. Um, but a huge thank you to everybody who got involved over the last couple of months because it has been so much fun and we cannot wait to have a venting manager for a real life competition very soon. And of course, be back in Arkin next year. Um, but let's talk eventing because we have been up and running now for a good few weeks in the UK. We've had plenty of horses out competing. Europe is in full swing. America is in full swing. So let's catch up a little bit on sort of what has been happening. Um, Spike, you've been eventing, haven't you? You've been to Barbary. I had a lovely day at Barbary um, on the Sunday for the, but I would say the intermediate day, but it was a bit of everything day. It was just a joy driving up that hill and coming in and just looking down over Barbary. I had to take a little picture, stuck it on the Instagram because it was pretty special to come back to eventing. Still gets, it still gets everything, you know, gets you going and it's interesting and, 
just sitting there and seeing the horses go by and the ground was unbelievable and I can't you know credit Musketeer for what they've done there and I think they've got big plans for the future years there and I think it's brilliant that that, that it sounds like Barbary's secured in the in the calendar going forward so um yeah had a great day saw some nice horses um and yeah and like yeah lots of good news the the water jump there is being changed for future years as well which i think has always been okay. a bit of a bogey fence that is going to be dug up and removed uh which made the vet very happy because <laughs> it's caused as many many a bother in previous years i saw yeah i saw toledo went, went round with tom he looked fresh um <laughs> Yeah, very fresh. Um, I don't think Tom could hold one side of him and managed to eventually get him on side going around the cross country. But he did have two lovely eight-year-old French bred horses uh, with Riverland in their name. I forget what their full names were, but they look beautiful horses for the future. So I'll keep an eye on them. We, I looked these up because you said he had found these two Riverland horses. And so I went stalking, uh, which is my second favourite pastime. Um, Cassiana de Riverland and uh, Coilbury de Riverland. I think they they were first and third in one of the intermediate sections. I think they but were really nice types. Yes. Yeah, really nice types. Um, he's very he seems to be good at finding these nice French horses, French bred horses, and bring them over. And um, with the success Kitty's been having with her two French bred horses, you know, trying to trying to get a few of them over from France, which isn't easy because they're quite good holding on to the nice ones, um, is um, a challenge. And uh, they you know they look lovely. There you go, listeners. There's a couple of horses to put on your list of ones to watch. And actually, we should talk about Kitty because we are going to have her back on the show. She should be on next week because she will be the defending champion going to Burgeon, Catherine, and we'll have a Burgeon preview show. Um, But she started the season in pretty excellent form. Well, she seems to have won pretty much anything. She's put her nose into, good girl. Um, her, she's on flying form. Her horses are on flying form. She's obviously. I do think that getting a couple of early wins under your belt is a great confidence giver, and everyone needs confidence, even the very best athletes in the world. And she's yeah. got confidence. Everything's going well. You know, those those really exciting horses are showing everything that we think that they are and we look forward to what they do for the rest of this season and obviously more importantly really next season but no I'm delighted for Kitty that she's had such a good start and it's it's fairly typical the riders that we expect to have a good start have done so largely you know Piggy French's Piggy March has been on great form Still getting my head around the the French to the March, I'm not going to lie. We just started to get it at the start of this season. At Lincoln, I was trained up. I was March, March, March. Um, And then it it, it just needs refreshing in my memory. But she's had a cracking start to the year, actually. Um, And a cracking restart to the year. I feel like we're at the start of the year and that we've blinked. And 2020 has been some sort of strange nightmare and it doesn't feel like August. It's like we're in March all over again, but just a bit warmer. Um, but a fun fact for you. So Piggy has the ride now on Dargan, um, who was formerly with Emily King, formerly a five-star ride for her, and a new ride this year. And she has won all three of the horse's runs since we've been back out competing in the, the last few weeks. Uh, and if she goes to, I think she's going to Aston Wall. So if she could make it four in a row, then only I think thirty horses have done it, um, have done four in a row in the last sort of five or six years on the British Eventing database. So that would be pretty cool. But, and this is an even more fun fact for you, I'm going totally down the down the stat route. Um, Dargan has done it before. He's done five uh, national wins in a row which was back in 2014 with Vicky Tufts at the very start of his career um so yeah just a nice little fun equating stat for you listeners uh to watch out for um but I know people in the flip group were have already been looking out for Dargan and have clocked his number of wins so I think that's an exciting one I'm really looking forward to seeing where she takes him actually because I'm hoping it might be a do you think long format at Burnham Market Catherine maybe was the obvious thing to do yeah. yeah could be really exciting I look forward to seeing her riding the horse um obviously I can visualize him very well with Emily but Piggy is well like all riders are different to each other it's a different sort of rider they've obviously clicked at the level they've competed at 
um, yeah, it'd be very interesting to see them tackling something with more distance and more challenges. There's a, there's a market. Uh, don't know yet. I haven't got over my excitement levels that I will be going to an event at Burgeum. I will see you actually, socially distanced, of course, uh, but at Burgeum in a couple of weeks' time, which I'm literally like a kid at Christmas about. You cannot even imagine um, how excited I am about that. But the whole world and his wife, I think, is going up to Burgeum in a few weeks' time. 183 four-star entries, isn't that right? Is that right? Yeah, I think it was 186. Maybe a couple have dropped out. (laughs) Oh, God, that's absolutely mad. Um, Okay, so there's a a few little bits of news. I've got a bit of news from the US that I think is worth noting. So Tammy Smith and My Bomb, who were, uh, they came over to Bukalo last year. They were part of the team that won gold at Pan American Games uh, that secured the US a ticket to Tokyo for the team. Um, They actually set a new advanced record. um, Oh, it's the lowest recorded dressage score at advanced since 2006, 17.7. I mean, and and that is very much within this combination's sort of regular uh, tests. They're, They're always in the low 20s. So to be dropping into the teens could see them actually, if we're thinking ahead to Tokyo 2021, um, obviously, we're a little way off, but a lot to get sorted before then. But we could see them mixing with some very, very good horses, one of whom we're going to talk about in a minute, especially in that first phase. Um, so that was exciting. And I think we could probably talk about another pretty impressive dress art score. Can we mention this? Because at, over the weekend um, at Norton Disney, at was it novice level spike? Yes, it was a novice. Uh, Somebody recorded a 9.5. I mean... Come on, Nicole, we've got a name checker because that is amazing. Hannah Atkinson, you absolute queen, because you scored 9.5 and you finished on it. Um, And she's coming to Burgeon, Catherine, in the two-star short, I I believe. (laughs) We're definitely going to video her round and then, well... Well, learn something from it but I mean it's been great that she finished on that score though because you could yes. say oh what a fancy dressage score then it you know it doesn't quite go so right but fantastic to actually finish on that very impressive no yeah, I'm we'll seeing her we'll have to go and fangirl her a bit and go Ooh, we'll go and stalk her and be like ah excuse me I mean it made Laura call it 15 <laughs> on what a horse she was riding seemed very average didn't it yes <laughs> yeah. I mean 9.9.5 9. is completely mad um Icarus is that that's when you fly too close close to the sun is it yeah it it that... was the it was it was the person that flew too close to the sun yes there you go uh, maybe the judge had been sat in the yeah. sun for a long period of time who knows uh but very very impressive so keep an eye out for them because that is very very cool Oh, my dogs are barking. Sorry about that. Um, Okay, let's talk then about another very impressive dressage score. To keep you up to date with some more news over in Europe is that Fisher Chipmunk FRH is back and he is on fire because he led a very, very hot four star at... um, Stragom a couple of weeks ago that had the likes of Samuel Odito, Julia Krajewski. In fact, both of Julia's were in there. Amanda Beneville was back as well. Um, there were some really, really nice horses in the field. And he beat them all by just under 15 marks, I think. Like, absolutely annihilated them. Finished on his dressage score of 19.4 And Spike, I actually got a bit overexcited and sent a message to our podcast group going, oh my God, oh my God, Chipmunk has just finished on a 19.4, forgetting totally that they had to show jump the next day. Um, But he he totally nailed it in the show jumping as well. And it was a tough show jumping track. Yeah, really impressive. He's matched that. Um, That's Mickey matching Julia's best dressage at Bramham on the horse on Chippy, um, which was 19.4. So um, he, I mean... uh, he's bringing it down to that level of dressage with the previous rider, which is a, you know, yes, it's Mickey, but it's still a hell of a challenge when you're following someone like Julia. But I mean, it was amazing that he went and made the time. I mean, yeah. he didn't, I watched some of the live stream. It didn't look the most technical or big four star short, but 
I mean, so Mickey, isn't it? To just say, out the box, first four he, stars short of the season. Ah, everyone's going for a you know steady confidence building run. Nope, bang, boom, clear inside, finish on my nineteen point four dressage. I mean, it's just so typically Mickey. And he didn't need you're... to chase the clock really either. Like he had time in hand, and nobody else made the time. So like he he went for it. The thing, the beauty of the way that he rides, though, is that it is all just so in balance all of the time. And it, and he's a big horse chipmunk. He's, he is, yeah. When you meet him in the flesh, he's like a big, kind Labrador type oh. of a thing. You know, he's not a nippy little thoroughbred that would, you know, Stregon would have been quick ground and not the most challenging. But, you know, he just manages to keep the horse in such a great balance and, and going at that speed. So, yeah, I think it means it's really exciting for him for <laughs> next year for Tokyo. <laughs> We're going to talk about another of his exciting ones in a minute. But actually, um, so he won by, what did he win by? Uh, 14.6 penalties. And by finishing on 19.4, it was Mickey's third best finishing score on record. He's only ever twice beaten that. So that was pretty impressive. Um, But it meant that Georgia Patrick, Echo Ratings analyst, dug back through the archives to look at major championship winning margins. So in the last 10 major championships, what those winning margins have been and from the top top 10 Mickey had the top six so his winning margins at the six championships basically he it's called Mickey's uh Mickey's magic margins or something um and basically just <laughs> goes on about how amazing it's, Michael it's Young is <laughs> Mickey's magic margins I think that's what it was um well yeah. he's quite good isn't he really you know oh Mickey's mighty margins and then a goat I mean, if there's ever a use for a goat emoji, it is Michael Young. Um, but yeah, Fisher Chipmunk is out and firing on all cylinders. And that kind of leads us on nicely to talk about this weekend, because it is one of the first big sort of four stars that um, certainly the British riders are going to be going to, because it is Haradapan in France, and it is a Nations Cup event as well. Um, we traditionally see a very, very good field of riders going over to Hurra. It's very, very popular. It's the venue that the World Equestrian Games were held in Cannes in 2014. Um, and this year is absolutely no exception. Now, obviously, we're recording this on Monday. It's going to be released on Wednesday, listeners. So if anything changes in the meantime, then accept our apologies for it. But obviously, we're looking at entries as they are now and who we, we think will be will be heading out to um, Harad. Do you think that was a fair enough disclaimer, Spike? We had this conversation, <laughs> didn't we? We were like, well, what do we do about COVID? I think based on the information we've got at the moment, it's perfect, Nickers. As there we go. Um, so let's talk about Michael Young, Fisher Chipmunk, because the Echo Ratings Prediction Centre, Spike, has him at a 25% win chance, which is pretty huge. In at this sort of level, especially with a, a massive number of horses in the field. Doesn't it just? I mean, it has it as a bit of a slam dunk for him. It, it has him well ahead of anything else in the field. And if you think that Laura's uh, due to be going over there with London 52, who has shown himself to be in some really nice form and through Laura's excellent social media channels, you can see him, you know, jumping big tracks and going really nicely um, on the flat you wouldn't think they would be a million miles apart in the dressage. So the fact that there's a, such a big gap on the uh, equi ratings predictor is, it was a little bit surprising to me. Um, I think you'd probably still have to have chipmunk favorite ahead of pretty much, you know, the rest of the field. But, uh, you know, if London 52 Dan's on a good day, um, then they might not be a million miles apart in the dressage, low twenties. And um, it would be a fair old shootout between the two. I'd fancy London 52 to jump clear over Chipmunk. And I wouldn't say they were particularly different as speed across the ground. So it would be pretty exciting seeing those two up against each other if they're both um, if pedals to the metal and they're both going for it. Yeah, I think that 19.4 finishing score that we've, we've just spoken about in Stragon will actually have sort of perhaps swung this in Chipmunk's favour slightly. But Laura has three horses entered and they all sit inside the top five on the prediction centre um, with DiCapo, who she's been named on the Nations Cup team with, and Mr Bass as well, who is back and raring to go. Brilliant to see. Um, the other Michael Young horse, actually, is Fisher Takanu, Catherine, who has only been seen, well, he's the 2015 European champion, 
uh, which he won as an eight-year-old back in 2015 at Blair. Um, That hugely impressive win, but he's only been seen once with Mickey since he finished second at Poe in 2016. So he's been out with Pietro Grandi, um, but it's good to see him back at four-star level with Mickey. And again, another bow to his string. Is that yeah, the right like, expression? <laughs> string to his bow? What's that expression? Yeah. <laughs> another string said, to his bow. But he has another many string bows to his bow. Yeah, there you go. There you go. I, I clearly remember this horse looking stunning at Blair in the um the Europeans back in 2015. And I haven't seen him um do anything since. Obviously a horse of enormous talent who has clearly had a lot of time off um and Pietro Grandis is based with Mickey and he uh, yeah the horse has run a couple of times well once the earlier this season and a couple of times last season steadily it would be very interesting to see whether all the pieces are back in the box and I don't know this could be a horse that they're just having fun with these days or it could be this is a really serious horse back nearing the top level who could be a as you say another proper string to his championship though not sure yeah I remember seeing him actually in Shardy I think in a two star as it was then um, back in 2017 and again he had he'd been second at Poe the year before and had sort of come back out but hadn't um, he'd been he'd won Arkham by that point as well and had sort of just had a bit of time off and first half of the 2017 season he looked super there and won but then has had missed pretty much all of the the 2018 season and most of 2019 as well so it's brilliant to have him back. I'm very excited to see what, what they do next with him. Um, Catherine, you're clearly a better judge of a horse than me because I remember seeing Fisher Takanu. He had it at Burley before Blair to ride around on and just keep in work. And I remember him riding past me and I remember thinking to myself, <laughs> what is Mickey riding past on a pot-bellied <laughs> chestnut thing with short legs? Like it, ju- it didn't look fit. And I mean, it was amazing. And it, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a lovely horse, but it just, it was, I remember seeing it riding it past and then seeing how it then performed. It just seemed like a complete, uh, different animal. Yeah. It just, it just didn't connect. It just didn't connect. Um, and yeah, that's what I remember being so amazed about the, the, the job that he did on the horse. It just, it, I can't, couldn't genuinely think it was going to be fit enough to go up and down the hills in the rain as it did. Um, yeah, given the way it looked. Cause it's, absolutely flowed up and downhill with his ears pricked and you know Mickey's a typical stance of his upper body and his balance and the rain forward the hand forward and the horse eating it all up and that's my only impression of it so how interesting that it mm. didn't look like that you know real deal when it was pushing about a week week before two weeks before two weeks before if we go to to Mickey's magic margins or whatever they were then Fisher Takanu actually holds the biggest winning championship in the last 10 years of nearly 10 penalties in Blair which is just and he finished on a score of 22.3 in new money which when you look back and think how tough Blair was that year and the pouring pouring yeah. rain um and I think only a couple made the time like that is just but I wouldn't be surprised if he came out and won on it you know he trusts his work riders so much yeah and it's an amazing setup he has there that the guys who are based with him do go out and compete his wonderful, you know, his great horses and the particularly ones that have been off for a while. And I remember it was it star connection that he hadn't ridden for two years. And then he won on one on at Wiesbaden. Yeah. Wiesbaden and we're all going in the Masters. preview going, I oh, you know he'll go steady. Yeah. It's just his first yeah. run. You know, he wouldn't want to push it, you know, push it or anything like that. So, you know, again, I, ever since then I'm permanently saying never, never discount Mickey on anything. So no, and and to be fair, Pietro is a is a cracking jockey in his own right. He's Italian, um, has based been based with Mickey for a little while, and just in the last few outings, he rides a lot of the a lot of Mickey's very good horses. So like Fisher Wild Wave, who won the Tokyo Test event, has been with him to to go out highlighter as well, who's. Again, a, a very, very decent horse. Lennox um, was was another one that he had out last season. So he rides, he's very used to riding um, a, a lot of Mickey's top horses and then Mickey takes back on the reins and, and does an exceptional job with them once again. So 
Uh, yeah, I, I think it's hard to look past a Michael Young victory in Hurrah this weekend. I think that's going to be really tough. Um, but let's pick out a few of the others in the lineup. Spike, who else stands out oh, I was just you? thinking to myself that I was going to try and have a little bet with you of a call it young match bet that would have been quite fun I, and I can I probably get to it because COVID will ruin it anyway but um, I know <laughs> uh, um, go on then. what odds did you give me come on oh god you're talking to the wrong person I am not a better Spike I don't know anything about odds Sam or D will um, absolutely give you give you something on this one but I'm okay we'll put it to the group totally. we'll see if we can put something out on social media for a match bet yeah. between those two um, okay. but I, w- I would say I think uh, well, it'd take Magic Mickey with Takano, I think, Chipmunk. If he runs him quickly, bearing in mind he ran quickly at Stragon last time out. And you haven't even um, mentioned that Mr. Bass is there. Yeah, we did. We dropped Mr. Bass in. Um, Laura's got three of the top five in the prediction centre. The other two are Michael Young. So between them, they take up the top five. Um, and then let's go a little bit further. Let's go a little bit further out of the obvious. So we've talked about Laura. We've talked about Michael Young. Who else is that spike that, that stands out for you? Well, um, with my uh, eye on youth development, I th- will give a big shout out to Victor Levesque, who I, and I think I mentioned on previous pods as being a real talent and star for the future. Um, he has got his lovely horse, and I'm going to say this really badly, and French people don't judge me, uh, Punambule des Auges that won oh, yeah, that Linier right. in the four-star short last year. And it was the horse that he won the Young Rider Europeans at Fontainebleau in 2018. He would have medaled in Marsbergen last year, but he had a frangible pin, which dropped him down to the top, you know, edges of the top 10. But it's a lovely horse and he's a hugely, hugely talented rider. And I know that the guys that, you know, the the young riders and the juniors that I, the British riders have seen they have come up through ponies and they've seen him as well and he's hugely talented and um I would be interested to see how he goes here you know the horse has had a prep run in a short three star at Jardy at the beginning of July so I will give him a shout out and hopefully a top 10 result maybe a little bit higher capable of a mid-20s dressage it's a fast enough horse and jumps well so um shouldn't be too far away Okay, so there's a French rider for you to watch, and not only this weekend, but for the future, Victor, Vic, Victor, Victor Lebec. And that is such a cool name to say. Um, Catherine, how about you? Who is your eye on this weekend? I would like to mention two other French horses. Um, the very lovely mare, Biermain, ridden by Tom Carlyle. Mm-hmm. And this, she's lovely and really exciting. Won the four-star short in Jardy. Um, Went very well, well, in several places last year, both Bucalo and Blenheim. She's super smart. Look forward to seeing her. And Astier's lovely grey, Babylon de Gamma, oh, who yeah. Flair last year. And that's another mega star. I think both of those young horses are particularly talented, particularly exciting, and could could genuinely give the French a home victory in this one, you know, chipmunk aside. So, um, yeah, real stars. Yeah. Do you know what? The French are so interesting because they have got some seriously nice, talented young horses coming through that for Tokyo next year, they're obviously going in as the defending team champions. And you can never write the French off, but it feels like they they had a little bit of disappointment. They obviously lost a team medal at the Europeans last year in the show jumping. But I just think that if these horses all come together, then we could be looking at them building a real charge and another year actually won't harm a few of these horses hopes I don't think because they'll get a bit more mileage on the clock um Nicholas Tuzon actually yeah yeah he's got a really nice horse yes the one entered in this class the Vendée Globe Jacques horse yes yeah exactly um and Nicholas Tuzon I think we've talked about him a bit on the podcast in the last couple of months in terms of the greatest wins of the noughties um that he was very much going to be coming back to to real sort of, it was a matter of if, not when. When, not if. <laughs> I'm on fire tonight, dear Lord. <laughs> oh, I was dear. just going to say that, that a, a really naff expression, which is class is permanent, isn't it? Exactly. And, um, exactly. He's a very classy jockey. 
Yeah, he's had a couple of jumping penalties, so he needs to iron those out. But he was top 10 at Bukalo last year. So he's got his Olympic qualification in the bag as well, which is always handy. Um, Babylon de Gamma, actually, with Astia Nicola, came over to the UK to go to Bicton for the advanced intermediate as part of his prep run for this. Um, and, and sort of the French uh, young guns, so to speak, to the seasoned campaigners, uh, King de Brio, and Thibaut Vallette is back um, and they are entered as well at 16 now. So, I mean, this horse has just got the most remarkable championship record, was part of that. Uh, well, first of all, took an individual bronze at Blair Castle at those European championships. Um, and at this point, Thibaut had literally done something like 15, maybe a slightly less, 15 uh, like internationals in his entire career. Um, and then obviously took team gold in Rio Backed it up with a top 10 in Stragom at the Europeans, was sixth in Tryon and then fifth at the Europeans in Le Moulin again. So he just has the most incredible championship record. But we don't often see him unleashed in the short formats. Um, championships are when he really sort of comes into his own. So I don't know if we'll see him go. He'll he'll be up there after the dressage. I don't know if we'll see him challenge the the win at the end of it. I don't know. Um, who else? Who else stands out for you, Spike? Oh, I was just thinking there, there's some really interesting horses running here and I could probably go on for ages and there's probably no point flagging every single one of them. But um, I'm really interested in Janelle on McLaren doing their first four-star short together. Um, she was also, I saw them on at Barbary and I also noticed that I think at Bicton they got the dressage, I want to say in the high 20s. Um, so that combination is obviously developing and they're very interesting to see them out. Um, I think that's probably a combination that I'm sure the New Zealand team are looking at towards 2021 in Tokyo. So I think that's really fascinating to see how they go um, at their, I would like to think their first four-star short together. Correct me if I'm wrong, Uh, but I don't think I am. And I also think that there is the other one that I saw, which is a horse with previous um, record and being on a team is Sydney Dufresne and Trezor Mail. They were on the French team in Stragom at the Europeans. So again, another another combination to be really interesting for you know future team recognition. They they're further down on the on the equi ratings prediction centre, but I think it's a very interesting combination for us to keep an eye on going forward. And I think this year, given all the interruptions and everything that's going on, I think it's I think there's a place for people to be looking at developing combinations and things like that, you know, getting, getting some real development into horses that have either had time off or are new and things like that. It's, it's a tricky old half a season, but I think there's a, there's a lot of really interesting stuff to watch and follow as a fan, which I am primarily other um, as well as being a vet. And, yeah, I think that there's a there's a lot to see develop in the next few months with an eye on 2021. Um, interesting combinations um, coming together, but they're two that I'd like to, you know, I think that are worth flagging for the future um, for their uh, respective nations. A horse that I'm looking forward to seeing is Chris Burson's Jefferson 18, stepping up to the levels for the first time. Really smart nine-year-old. You know what he's like. He's brilliant and he is just, fast he would be fast on a donkey and this he's building the most incredible pre-Tokyo squad and this could be another member of it so I guess it's unlikely this horse will win this weekend but it is certainly one for as Spike said eventing fans to keep a close eye on yeah I mean he, he just has so many horses already qualified for Tokyo um I think he has six in in the locker already, but actually he's got a couple of really nice younger horses. There's Jefferson, and I'm trying to think of the name of another one that is coming through as well that somebody actually sort of flagged up to me and said, oh, keep an eye on it. Um, Leopard's Action, I think it's called. And it again oh, is yeah. only, it's it was from, it was with Eva Clark and has had top ten at sort of, uh, two star level with Efa, but again yeah, has just gone to him. the very yeah. beginning of this, this, the first bit of the season. Yeah, 
it's only an eight-year-old. Um, but again, he's just got a really, really nice team of horses. Um, there's, it's hard to pick pick a favorite, I think. Um, so yeah, I'd I'd say look out for those. Uh, Janelle Price actually has Gravine that Ev in in the field entered as well. Um, Tim's got a, a good number of entries, and I would also say um, if we go back to the French, uh, Karim Laguag. Uh, Triton Fontaine, who were runners up at um, Protoni in the four star long at the back end of last year, the last four star long on European soil, uh, were runners up there to Gwendolyn Fur and Romantic Love, the former Poe five star winners. So it had some very good form. And um, Gwendolyn as well has Troan Prince in the field, and he's a very good horse. Um, but the one I'm going to pick out for you listeners is I cannot believe that the prediction center only has him at a 2% win chance because he was fourth at the Europeans last year. He missed out on the individual bronze medal by one second on the cross country. Um, and it is Christopher six totem de Brassy, um, who has been on the podium, I think in some year, um, as well, leading up to the Europeans. Um, but he's a really, really nice horse, generally a very good jumper, um, sort of a one or none sort of show jumper and has scored in the late twenties. So he's not going to be in the mix with, with the likes of Chipmunk and London 52 in that first phase, but it's still a very, very nice horse for the home nation. And one that I think they'll be watching very, very closely for, for Tokyo next year. Um, so yeah, that, that's my, that's my dark horse as one to keep an eye on. Um, I'll give you another dark horse that's really low down in the prediction center, but is a horse that had great form last spring and I know is um, a big favorite of Jenny Autry because she's always followed in with great affection. And that's Figaro Van Hip Brooks off of Tom McEwen's. Mm. I mean, he won Belton last year and was second at Le Moulin. His form tailed off a little bit through the end of last season. But I mean, if he's got him back to where anywhere he was last spring, then... You know, you'd say he's, you know, he's got to be up there with a reasonable chance. Um, yeah, he's got three. He's got Braveheart B, which is a horse that I think has started the or sort of restarted this season very, very well. Um, but you don't, you don't often see Tom on a horse and you think, oh, I don't, you know, that's not my type. He just has so many lovely, lovely horses. Um, as Spike alluded to, at the, start of the show. Go on then. I would like to mention Victoria Panazan's Supercilious, who is really, I think, an improving horse and had a really unfortunate 11 penalties for frangible pin at the Europeans last year. Finished inside the time. Dressage marks are getting better, really coming down. Um, They managed 31.5 at the Europeans and take a few more marks off that speedy horse and we know victoria is speedy it's also a you know it's a, it can it can show jump clear it hasn't always done and yeah it's a nice horse and they could be well definitely top 10 maybe top five yeah good shout i think she went very well in the nation's cup at campfire just before the europeans as part of their their preparation for it yeah. um and only an 11 year old as well so still sort of hasn't long been stepped up to to four star level that was their first year last year um okay go on let's let's pick a winner because it is a massive field we could talk about all of the combinations in great great detail but the people want to know spike who do you think will win will it be mickey will it be laura or will it be somebody else entirely okay so i hate picking a favorite so i'm just going to steer away from mickey if I think of this as like, you know, with the odds and he's a big favorite based on the prediction center, but I would have, I would back Laura and London 52 against him in this environment. So let's go with Laura. If okay. she gets there, if she gets <laughs> and she's there. allowed home. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, that's the thing at the moment, isn't it? Um, Catherine, how about you? Are you going to give us a podium spike or are you literally just going to give us a winner? Oh, I've so missed this. Okay, um, podium <laughs> of Laura on London 52, Chipmunk second, and Fisher Takanu third. Okay, go on then, Catherine. Mm. Chipmunk oh, first. Okay. London second. And Babylon to Gamma third. Okay. 
I am actually going to go against the grain um, and say, that I, don't, I don't know if I can see Mickey running Chipmunk fast two four-star shorts on the trot. And he obviously ran him quick, very quickly in stray gone. So I don't know whether he'll run him quickly again. I'm not sure. The time might not even be tight. Who knows? Um, in fact, looking back to last year, the time I think was pretty achievable. Um, so that might not even be that um, influential on the leaderboard. But I am actually going to say that it is the defending champion who is going to win in Harrah. And it is going to be, he won last year with Punch de Lesk, uh, but I think he is going to win with Triton Fontaine, who actually finished third in the three-star short format last year. Um, so stepping up a level this time, but I'm going to say Karim is going to win and he's going to be very excited about it, as Karim is. <laughs> and I will say second is going to be... Oh, Gwendolyn for Trone Prince and third, Christopher Six, Totem de Bressy. I'm going yeah, for all French podium. Awesome. More original than because me. as you said, when we were prepping for this, the French are out in fourth here. <laughs> they are. <laughs> Who would have thought it, Spike? Who would have thought the French would be out in fourth in France? <laughs> and don't count all your apples oh, before they hatch. <laughs> no, exactly. It will add strings to your bow to your strings or whatever it was. Um <laughs> Oh, dear God, I've missed a preview show. Listeners, this has been a long time coming. Um, so goodness me, I I hope that you are enjoying it as much as we've enjoyed it. And we have more in store for you over the next few weeks as well. Uh, do you know if Hurrah is being live streamed? Does anybody know if we'll be able to watch it? I was going to ask that. I don't know. Is it normally? I can't remember. Seems it has been in the past, was. hasn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. been in the past. But I don't think it was last fingers year, crossed. so fingers crossed. Okay, fingers crossed. Um, people will be able to watch Burgeon in a couple of weeks' time because that's going to be live-streamed on Horse and Country. That's that's very exciting. Um, and we will have a Burgeon preview show for you as well, listeners. But for now, we hope you've we've caught you up to date with all of the goings-on or some of the goings-on in the eventing world. And we are looking forward to... Uh, one of the first big Nations Cups, the first big four stars since everything has been restarted. We haven't actually picked a Nations Cup winner. Um, do we want to throw that into the mix as well? Just pick a country. I'm going France, France. because obviously they're all on the podium. <laughs> I'm going France. Well, I'm going to go with the Brits then. Okay, deal. Yeah. Right, done. Listeners, thank you. A spike, Catherine, a pleasure as absolutely always. Um, and we will be back very soon on the Accurating Seventing podcast. We've got loads coming up for you in the next few weeks. And if you have any requests of people that you would like to hear from or shows that you would like, I know Spike is waiting for his next hold box topic. Um, so if you have any suggestions for him, then send them in. We would love to hear from you. Get in touch across social media. Um, either at Echo Ratings, at Nicole Brown Media, uh, at Spike the Vet. Um, so yeah, get in touch. We would love to hear from you. But for now, that is all we've got time for. And we'll be back very soon with another episode. But thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to the Echo Ratings Eventing Podcast. This podcast is available for free on iTunes, Spotify, Podcast Addict, or wherever you usually listen to your podcasts. Make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss an episode. Find us at eventingpodcast.com or search Eventing Podcast on social media.